Have you ever heard of the Kuwaiti royal family or the Al-Saba dynasty? Most likely not, yet the Kuwaiti royal family is regarded as the second richest royal family in the world after the Saudi royal family. The family secretly spends millions of dollars in palaces, automobiles, and jewelry without ever garnering the media's notice. But how much money does the family spend and what is the value of the royal family? Keep watching the video to find out. Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In the video today, we'll introduce you to the Kuwaiti royal family's daily routine. Everything will be made public, including the royal family's ownership of how many businesses, palaces, and jets. But before we begin, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss a video from us. Now without further ado, let's begin. Let's first examine how the royal family came to be in power before delving into their opulent fashion. Early in the 18th century, some families of the Aniza tribe moved to Kuwait from Najat, present-day Saudi Arabia, and thus marked the beginning of Kuwait's modern political history. They come from the Utba tribe as well. They allied with the other Utba families, including Al Khalifa and Al Jalama, once they arrived in Kuwait. The leaders of the several tribes in Kuwait's town met in 1718 and picked Saba ibn Haber to lead Kuwait as its sheikh and served as its administrator under Emir of Al Hasa. Kuwait gained its independence in 1752 as a result of an agreement between the Sheikh of Kuwait and the Emirate of Al Hasa, whereby Al Hasa acknowledged Saba ibn Haber as the independent ruler over Kuwait in return for Kuwait's promise not to form alliances with or support Al Hasa's adversaries or meddle in Al Hasa's international affairs in any way. Saba first's youngest son, Abdullah bin Saba, succeeded him after his death. Sheikh Haber bin Abdullah, the grandson of Kuwait's first king, sided with the Ottoman Empire and opposed the British administration in about 1814. He opposed British plans to turn Kuwait into a British protectorate and supported the Ottoman government in its conflict with the Banu Qab over Basra and Quramashar. He signed a pact with the British in 1841, however, which softened his early animosity toward them. January 18, 1899 was the date. Mubarak, the seventh ruler of Kuwait, and Major M.J. Mead, a British political resident in Busher, signed a covert pact protecting Kuwait from any external assault. The coronation of Kuwait's first prime minister, Emir, took place in February 25, 1950. Abdullah was more pro-Arab than pro-British, in contrast to his forebears. By signing a contract with the British on June 19, 1961, he officially terminated Kuwait's position as a British protectorate. He's also credited with founding modern Kuwait. The Kuwaiti constitution was then presented in 1962, and the parliament was then established in 1963. Currently, Kuwait is controlled by the Kuwait royal family which has a $360 billion fortune. One of the numerous vices the family indulges in with their money is buying opulent mansions. One of the most valuable pieces of real estate the family possesses is the Darner. The Darner collection, according to Architectural Digest, has more than 500 works of art by Middle Eastern and worldwide artists. However, the family has other residences in addition to this one. Their residence in Marrakech is another spectacular mansion owned by the family. These gorgeous 17,000 square meter houses are surrounded by delightful olive orchards and have great views of the Atlas Mountains. The stylish Shika Mazda Al Saba adorned the $3 million house. The royal family also has a second property in Morocco. The mansion was bought, according to Vogue, for Sheikh Al Saba's cosmetics company and mental wellness. The Bayan Palace, however, is the most well-known of all of its residences. A full-size tennis court, a big movie theater, a lovely garden, a complete staff of butlers and maids, and a multi-million dollar collection of artwork and jewelry are all features of the Bayan Palace. The castle frequently appears in the top page of newspapers since it has a stunning meeting center. Another expensive thing that the family likes purchasing is cars. Their love is for high-end cars. The historical vintage and classic cars museum in Kuwait houses the family's greatest collection of automobiles. Millions of dollars worth of high-end automobiles that were once held by Kuwaiti aristocracy are on display in the museum. The family's best spoke Porsche 911 Turbo S is the most notable sports car they own aside from the vehicles in the museum. This odd-looking automobile has a vanilla gold exterior, a leather inside with orange and yellow tones, wooden door trims, and a variety of additional Porsche-only features. Nasser al Muhammad al Saba commissioned this unusual car, which is valued at $888,888. $888 a weird price for a far-odd vehicle. Even if being the Prince of Kuwait wasn't enough to draw attention, this automobile would. The most crucial aircraft in Kuwait royal fleets are jets. The family frequently flexes other vehicles than cars. Business Insider reports that former U.S. President Trump allegedly made a light-hearted remark about 
being envious of the Emir of Kuwait's enormous private jet. According to reports, the jet is 100 meters long than the one Trump was using. You can see that size is important. If Trump's jet is worth $100 million, just think how much the Emir's plane would cost. Princess Sheikha Maryam Muhammad Al Saba is one of the royal family members that spend the most money overall. She's reportedly spending millions of dollars on her shopping excursions. The most noteworthy acquisition is a $20 million necklace. The most costly sapphire necklace ever sold in the world is this diamond and a sapphire piece. You won't believe what she wore to her sister's wedding if you think that's strange. The 23-year-old attended the wedding wearing an extravagant $500,000 Ralph and Russo gown. Yes. Her clothing did cost more than the average person's house, but that's only the start. On her sister's special day, she also donned $7 million worth of jewelry, including a Harry Winston diamond tiara, diamond earrings, and diamond rings. With all that brightness, the outfit must have been visible from space. Up to this point, we have seen the royal family's spending. Let's now examine the royal family's revenue sources. According to recent reports from the Pandora newspaper, the late Kuwaiti Emir Nawaf al Ahmad al Haber al Saba and his sons are the owners of the Kuwait Projects Company holding Kipco, one of the biggest economic edifices in Kuwait, the Gulf, and maybe the Middle East. More than 60 firms with operations in 24 different countries are listed in Kipco. Financial services, media, real estate, and manufacturing are the royal family's primary commercial areas. Some of the firms they hold include Burgeon Bank, Panther Media Group, Gulf Insurance Group, United Real Estate Company, and many more. The United Gulf Holding Company, with a market value of $34 billion, is the most prosperous of these businesses. They also own $50 billion worth of significant blue chip corporations in the US. The Al Saba family has grown more actively involved in charity in the nation and aggressively encourages Kuwaitis to do the same. Their efforts to assist with the humanitarian catastrophe in Syria serve as a recent illustration of this. In response to the Syrian crisis, Kuwait has sponsored three international conferences under the direction of Amir Nawaf al Ahmad al Haber al Saba. The conferences managed to collect promises of $7.5 billion, with Kuwait pledging a total of $1.3 billion. In addition, the Emir promised $500 million, of which $100 million came from public funding and $400 million from private sources. Encouraged by the Emir, the family strives to make a good contribution to Kuwaiti society and the wider globe, with the enormous riches and influence that come with decades of leadership and respect. At the time of his passing, Saba IV al Ahmad al Haber al Saba, the Emir of Kuwait, had a net worth of $600 million. Saba oversaw the Kuwaiti military as its commander. The Saba monarchy was led by the Sheikh. At the age of 91, he passed away on September 29, 2020. He had a stroke in 2019, which left him largely unable for his final year of life. His half brother, Crown Prince Sheikh Nawaf al Aman al Haber al Saba, succeeded him. In June 1929, he was born in Kuwait City, Sheikhdom of Kuwait. Kuwait had not even discovered oil when he was born. Today, 6% of the world's oil is produced in this little nation, which is smaller than New Jersey. In 1954, he began working for the municipal administration. Saba represented Kuwait as its foreign minister from 1963 to 2003. After the Gulf War, he was entrusted with mending Kuwait's diplomatic ties. Then from 2003 to 2006, he was Kuwait's prime minister. After Sheikh Haber, the previous emir, passed away in January 2006, Sheikh Saad became the new emir. Saad was unable to continue due to health issues and abdicated later that month. The next emir of Kuwait has been named Sheikh Saba. He abolished Kuwait's National Assembly in 2008. The Sheikh increased his annual salary from $180 million to the equivalent of $25 million. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video and don't want to miss any future ones. If you are interested in learning more about royal families, let us know who you want to learn about next in the comments. Thanks for watching.